I'm Nick Ware with The Arts End. Each week I talk to artists, arts practitioners and people involved in the arts in the region and find out their inspirations, their background, what makes them tick and the music they like. My guest this week is cigar box guitar maker Bruce Trapps. What is a cigar box guitar? Well, stick around and find out, but it sounds like this. That's the sound of a cigar box guitar. Bruce Trapps lives near Exeter on the Tamer and makes these wonderful little instruments which are becoming very popular among players, especially blues and slide guitar players. But as we'll also hear, they're being snapped up by non-players just for their decorative value. Bruce, you're what many people would describe as an artisan, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I do a few things. I, I don't know where it comes from. It's just born out of necessity, I think, right, to some you, degree. Now, let's, first of all, you make jewellery. Oh, I have made jewellery. Um, I donated a fair bit of my jewellery um, materials to a, a woman who got burnt out down at Dun Alley. So did you? At the okay. moment, I'm not really doing jewellery. Right. But, uh, when you were doing jewellery, what sort of jewellery did you make? I was doing pork jewellery, pendants, uh, spoon rings. Um, you know, so you recycle things. old materials yeah, that you find? Yeah, and um, horseshoe nails. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with horseshoe nails. I probably still fiddle around with that a bit. I like fiddling with things, like, I suppose you'd... It down there. So you're probably well known around Tasmania now, you're getting better known for your cigar box guitars. You've got a bit of a reputation, I'll tell you. Let's talk about what a cigar box guitar is first of all. Well basically it's just a stick through a box, born out of necessity by the um, early Negro in America. As a result of the um, slave trade, the Negroes were taken to America to work in the cotton fields and uh, obviously didn't have any money or anything so they improvised and made their own instrument. And the most basic instrument the Negroes in those days used was a, a wire on a wall, stuck mm. on a nail to a wall and they'd, they'd play that and use the, the wall as a soundbox. Yeah, I, I heard an interview the other week um, from someone in America who said Robert Johnson used to um, have a piece of wire nailed to the wall of his house, humpy, yep. whatever it was and... But they progressed into using what they could find, and that was mm, like a cigar yeah, box yeah. with maybe a broom handle on it and a piece of wire on that to yeah, get the sound. Yeah, a lot sound. of people say a um, piece of fly wire out of a screen door and things like that. Yeah, very, very basic instruments, but, you know, make yeah. like some brilliant songs out of it. And I think probably one of the most famous that people would probably have seen would be Bo Diddley's guitar, which was a bit bigger. Yeah, probably, yeah. But it was yeah, the same. It was a square box with a with a handle on it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that was... a. Was it a Gretsch? Yeah, I think it was a Gretsch, yeah, but, yeah, uh, no, but it's, no it, it has that shape. Now, so, so mm. we're talking about it, usually it's the shape of a, of a square box with a, with a neck on it that oftentimes was just handmade, not always uh, six strings, there's sometimes two, well, sometimes one, but... The traditional cigar box guitar, as far as I know, is either a three or a four stringer. A lot of people do make them with six strings now. Yeah. I so, sat down in Hobart wanting me to build him a six stringer, and I was a bit <laughs> reluctant to do it because I was a bit worried about building a six string neck, but um, anyway... So how did you get into building a cigar box guitar? Once again, born out of necessity. I ended up having a workplace accident. wasn't able to really do the job that I was doing at the time. and I'm getting near retirement age. I mean, no one else really wants to employ someone with an injury, plus over <laughs> 60. So um, that's what I started doing. But I've always had an interest. I always wanted to play a guitar. Yeah. But you don't yeah. play, well, you say you don't play a guitar. No, I can't play for nuts. Probably one of those frustrating things when you're young, you, know, you want to play a guitar and you want to do rock and roll like Chuck Berry or Elvis Presley or someone like that. And My first guitar was built out of an old drawer out of a cupboard and, and a well, stick attached, go. so that's how... <laughs> but I say yeah, I can't I play guitar. either, but, <laughs> but, I mean, it just seems a long stretch to say, oh, we've got to play guitars to actually building a, a cigar box guitar. Yeah, I, I suppose that the progression was that uh, I was someone who was just too impatient to learn properly, and then as I got a lot older, um, I thought, well, I've probably got a bit more time on my hands now than what I used to. I'll I'll go and buy one. I'll buy a resonator. I really like the sound of a resonator. 
Now, resonator is an acoustic guitar that has a sort a of metal of plate on it that yeah. v- makes the sound yeah. loud. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gives them more of a banjo-y sound yeah. generally. So I bought one on eBay, uh, and um, the same old problem. Still couldn't play it, but I love <laughs> the sound of it. <laughs> I can play a few chords, uh, but there again, I was doing uh, open tunings, uh, which I knew nothing about when I was a lot younger. And with open tunings, well, you know, you can go wrong, but you can't go too far yeah. wrong. So I bought that, and then I still couldn't play that. So I thought six strings, it's no good. What else can I play? And it just happened across the cigar box guitars somewhere on the net, and I uh, thought, well, three strings, uh, open chords, got to be simple. Or well, at least half as simple as playing a six-string well, yeah. guitar. <laughs> uh, half, half the problem the six-string <laughs> guitars got. So I thought, oh, well, I didn't really want to buy one, I wanted to make one. Uh, so they looked pretty simple, but then I thought, no, I don't know how the next goes into the boxes and what they do. So, so I bought one. I bought one from Melbourne that came from Dakota in America originally and when I got hold of that I thought geez there's nothing to this at all so um, I ordered a few cigar boxes from America and just having to find those how did you do that basically get on eBay and look for cigar boxes just type in cigar boxes and yeah. in America it's quite a big business and you're actually just able to buy them and, and bring them yeah. to Australia yeah, yeah. That, uh, I've got a chap who I deal with now over there he's got 15,000 in a warehouse just empty cigar Gee. boxes so <laughs> it's, it's a lot of cigars deal over there but the other part is the neck I mean you had to build the necks yeah well, most well a lot of builders who build them build them out of just a bit of plank really yep. but I I don't know, me being me, I wanted to improve on that and get a little, put a bit more sort of finesse into it. And um, I just eventually came up with my own design after about three or four guitars. The first one I made was really elaborate. It had a tapered neck on it and all sorts of things, but it took that long to build. I thought, you know, <laughs> no point doing this. <laughs> Most of the, the other pieces are easy to find, I suppose, from suppliers like the headstocks or the, the, yeah, uh, the nuts. The, and. Um, but on your guitars, I mean, you use uh, screws as part of the bridge, and bolts and things. And yeah, that, that, that's another idea that's come off the net from um, America. You go onto some of these cigar box guitar sites in America and they've come up with some fantastic ways of doing bridges and um, nuts. So I, I just sort of well, and, and you've, from there. You've progressed actually to things like a steampunk guitar. We've got one sitting here, it's, it's metal. It looks like a, a, a factory that's been bombed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you've, you've used things like spark plugs for the for the bridge and where the strings go in. And It's like a machine, isn't it? Yeah, that, that um, got born out of a friend of mine who's a regular player, um, around Launceston quite frequently now, although he lives down south, that's Philippe Castillo. I met him first at Fourth Blues Festival a uh, year before last, and he had a um, homemade instrument made out of a frying pan. <laughs> and I was pretty intrigued with that, and I emailed him, and we talked about that, and he says, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I make cigar box guitars. So he said, well, bring some down to Fourth and give us a look. So I took them down to Fourth, and um, next minute he's, he's got one. But a lot of a lot of his um, venues are, um, are bikey clubs and things like that. They, they seem to like his They'd style like of playing, and, and it suits his character too. So I thought, no, you don't want a cigar box. You need something a little bit more over the top. And <laughs> you got it. That's what came out of it. We call them a tram smash guitar.
That was Philippe Castillo playing Stomp on one of Bruce Trapp's cigar box guitars. Bruce Trapp's is my guest on the Arts End today. The sound from these guitars, is not, it's not one of your gentle Spanish guitar sounds. You're looking at it's something that turned up full blast with distortion and playing blues as a slide guitar. That's, that's what they're... Well, basically, yeah. yeah. And not necessarily blues. It can be... Well, Rock and roll or yeah, anything. It can but, be anything, uh, really. Yeah, I think we were, when we were down at Signet Folk Festival last year, Philippe had a gig across the road at another place, and we could hear him at the festival. <laughs> That's <laughs> <Certainly. Well, laughs> <laughs> And you had a good response to them. You sold quite a few. I've sold over a hundred. Yeah. I don't know where they've all gone, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and well, interest from all over. I mean, you, you say Diesel got one, and, and he rates it pretty highly. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was pretty impressed with that. I, I'm still a bit gobsmacked over Diesel wanting one or getting one. And I've yet to hear him play it, but I'm sure he will one day. And I'm told it's going to be played on one of his next albums. So has anybody else recorded uh, anything with your guitars? Mm, there's a few YouTube know. clips which we'll play some music from. You know, there's, there's obviously people actually out there playing your guitars. Well, with a hundred solos, yeah. I suppose someone's got to be playing them somewhere <laughs> yeah. besides Philippe. I mean, he's bought four of them, or he owns four of them. Right. We've done a deal with one way or another, but... Um, yeah, there's, there's some fairly talented people out there playing them, but whether they actually play them in gigs or not... I'm oh, they do. You also make amplifiers as well, the, out of cigar boxes. Yeah, that was another thing that came out of America. And uh, This chap who's got these 15,000 cigar boxes in America, <laughs> he said, oh, I'll send you over... I asked for a whole lot of punch boxes. So he said, oh, yeah, I'll send you every punch box I've got. The only trouble is when I got the boxes, I found this, all these little tiny boxes. And I thought, what on earth am I going to do out of them? <laughs> They're too small for guitars. Yeah. Then I saw other people were making amps, so sent away to America again, got mm, some got little, the... L, well, they're fairly L cheapo amp circuit boards. Do you have to have the knowledge of electronics to actually put these things together yourself, or is that something you've learned yourself? Or? To make it worthwhile, you've got to do a, a certain amount of it yourself. But uh, the circuit boards come complete and they right. come with all the bits and you just solder them together. But yeah, uh, yeah I suppose you've got to have soldering skills to some degree to be able <laughs> to put it together and a bit of a um, feel for how a cigar box amp should look like. And so where do you where do you go from? I mean, you're obviously experimenting with the, with the Tram Smash guitar. That's a step up. I mean, mm. where, are you, where are you going with this? Do you, do you know yet or do you just want to play it by ear? Basically, just playing it by ear. But uh, I've got some more wild and wonderful ideas for Tram Smashes in the future. So <laughs> I suppose I'm going to have Philippe ringing me up so saying, I want that one, I want this one. <laughs> you had a bit of success at the 4th Blues Festival this year with them. You took uh, them up there yeah, and showed them off. We took them down there in the Launceston Blues Club, which I'm a member of, um, had them on display. In fact, you, I think you gave one to the Launceston Blues Club. Yeah, so. I've, I've seemed to donate quite a few of them <laughs> to various things. Um, the Save the Tassie Devil uh, campaign, got one. Launceston Blues Clubs get some every now and again for... Revenue raising. Oh, well, there's a few happy people out there playing them in, in well, the long run. They're, they're fantastic looking and, and sounding guitars. I'll declare an interest that the Ware Gallery does have them for sale here as well, and we've already sold one to a very happy customer. Lovely. So there's there's a lot of interest in them, and I, I know you know I know from personal experience the interest in them, and they, they look fantastic. And they even look good on the wall. You don't have to actually play one. They're, they're a great ornament, aren't they? Yeah, well, actually, the first Fourth Valley Blues Festival I had them at uh, on display, and a, a woman come along and looked at the display, and she said, oh, well, I'll have that one over there. Fine. So she bought that, and off she went. And about six months later, she, she um, emailed me, and she said, well, I'm the woman who bought one of your guitars at the... Fourth Valley Blues Festival. I'm sorry, I remember who you are. And she said, well, I want another one. I said, oh, okay. She said, I, I don't play them. I know the feeling. Uh, but she said, I, I just want to put them on the wall. Yeah. And she said, in about another six months, I want another one again. Yeah, I mean, well, she's got the three handy items on the wall. <laughs> if any musicians come up to her place, they can certainly take them down and plug them in and play them. Terrific. Uh, well, they're yeah. a great decorator item, as yeah, well as well, being a, a, yeah, a terrific right, sound right. instrument. We'll have a listen to some more of them. Thanks very much for coming mm. in. Thank you. 
My guest today was cigar box guitar maker Bruce Traps from Exeter. Again, I'll declare an interest in that we have Bruce's guitars for sale at the Ware Gallery in Emu Bay Road, Deloraine, and you're most welcome to call in and have a test run. I'm Nick Ware, this is The Arts End on MVFM 96.9.